come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> You're listening to a very special episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Why is it special, Colin? It's the 500th episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Yay! <laughs> Five hundred episodes. Owen Wilson would say, "Wow, that's a lot of movies." <laughs> wow, it's a lot of movies. <laughs> Even technically, we've done more than that because there were a couple of episodes where we did like three or four movies on right. one show right. or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, and there's mm-hmm. been some lost episodes. Some lost episodes. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah. Is there any? Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd have to bring that up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> some, more some than episode, five hundred. <laughs> some episodes we've recorded multiple times. Yeah. True. How many times did we do Ghost in the Shell before three. we got a full episode? <laughs> yeah. Three <laughs> times. Yes. That took a long that time. We were very. That's Fuck why we were very that. drunk. That's on that why episode. you guys hated that movie. Fuck yeah, that movie yeah. because we had to talk about it three times. <laughs> three. It was yeah. like two a.m. We're all drunk, still talking about Ghost in the Shell. Yep. Yeah. All the crazy <laughs> backstory things that go on in this show that you don't know about. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. We've made it five hundred episodes. Did we uh, lose the signs episode? I can't remember if we redid that one. We redid the Babadook, right? Because think- you guys did it and lost it, and then eventually we brought, I brought it back it. when we yeah. were in the show. Okay, then yeah. we did it again. So right. we may have lost signs. Yeah. We did signs. Well, it's the 20th <laughs> anniversary of signs this year, so I think you can say it's safe to say we'll come back around to signs pretty soon. Yeah, we yeah. can revisit that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we've got better equipment now, and things have been more reliable, knock on we're wood. We're older and wiser, right? That's Colin? right. We're talking about the yeah. people or the microphones? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, then uh, we got to do a toast. Yeah, to you. We have, to we 500 have our, episodes. Have sparkly here. Yeah. Yep, yeah, to right. 500 episodes. Clink, to clink, all clink. of our cheers. listeners. Yeah, cheers. To anyone cheers. who ever got any joy out of listening to us. Yes. This yes. is for you and for us. Cheers to you. Cheers Thank to you. you. This is good champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. This is delicious. I'm sorry. That's just my it's Nick Cage Dork impression. Honey, damn it. Uh-huh. Oh, is it? Oh, oh okay. This is imported. Finest right here. Oh, very tasty. Right. Wow. Exotic very imports tasty. you brought us. <laughs> well, thank you for bringing that home. Yeah, is that illegal? Far away lands yeah. of Wisconsin. <laughs> We've been yucking it up here uh, all night. We had yeah. uh, some dinner. We got some yeah. some, some desserts. Mm-hmm. We got we had a cheese board. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. we got yeah. fancy with it. Some fancy cheeses. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah, we got five hundred cookies cootery. here. That's right. Not mm-hmm. five hundred cookies. No, no, but. we have five hundred cookies. One for each episode. <laughs> yes, and we've got Holly some, decorated, uh, decorated for each yep. episode. Yes, <laughs> my hands are broken. Yes. <laughs> And we've got some uh, listener mail um, in celebration of the uh, 500th episode that we'll have coming up during uh, Igor's mailbag. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, I suppose we should introduce ourselves if this is your first rodeo. Uh, (laughs) These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. Every episode is somebody's first episode. That's right. Yeah. So this could be your first episode. So thanks for joining us for this special. And where have you been this whole time? (laughs) Um, we hey, were better late than, than never. never. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> twinsies. So here's the question, Michaela: Were you looking for a movie with 500 in the title to celebrate our 500th episode? No. Okay. Uh, we <laughs> figured there's no. only no. there's only one. We could only think of 500 Days of Summer, and I'm sorry, I don't want to talk about that on the free right. show. I really don't. So instead, we watched a movie. I suppose that was chosen by Michaela. Yeah, yeah. called <laughs> Vampire's Kiss. There you go. Ooh. And this a is- movie that. <laughs> Believe- takes Jim Carrey from Liar Liar and puts it in the body of Nicolas Cage. Yeah. And lets him run. I think yeah, I think what you're meaning to say is Jim Carrey stole from Nicolas Cage in this movie. Quite this possibly. movie predates all of that. Quite possibly. It's possible, mm-hmm. yeah. No, this is this is Nicolas Cage doing body comedy. This is the the blueprint for his career. Yeah. This movie right here. <laughs> like yeah. this is the genesis of it all. This yeah. movie launched a thousand memes. Mm-hmm. It is. Apparently, yeah. I, I had no idea. If they gave Lifetime know. Achievement yeah. Awards for the internet, this would be like Lifetime Achievement in like outstanding memes. Yeah, you've like, seen yeah. images yes. or scenes from this movie and you don't even know it. Yeah. Well, yeah. So uh, what year was it from? 1988. And it was directed by? Uh, Robert. Robert Bierman. Bierman. And mm-hmm. he had also done, or has also done... He's not the one you talk about when you talk about this movie, okay. because oh. the writer and the producer are the John Carpenter and Deborah Hill of this oh, okay. situation. Okay. Who's, are, who's the writer? Who uh, the writer is Joseph Minion and Barbara Z- Zitwer is okay. his on-again, off-again girlfriend that were yeah. constantly breaking up and getting back together and fighting during the whole production of this movie. Uh, uh, yes. Yep. 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 Okay, and we would know him from... 
Vampire's Kiss. <laughs> I think he did some television writing as well. Hold on. Well, he also, so he wrote, I looked this one up. Mm-hmm. He wrote a movie called After Hours, which That's was right. directed by Martin Scorsese. And oh, so yeah. because of the sale of that and the success mm-hmm. of that movie, he got to do Vampire. He was the guy this who dude wrote, wrote a Scorsese movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. It was the one with Griffin Dunn, Dune, Griffin Dunn, where he has to run all night through uh, New York. So a little bit of crossover. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this killed his career. I may mm-hmm. or may not be ah. correct on that uh, score. Wow. Um, so he's the one dating Barbara Whitwer. The, who, Zitwer, yeah. Zitwer, mm-hmm. who then becomes the producer of the correct. movie. Okay. So his relationship with her kind of informs the <laughs> back like, you're a, a fucking story. vampire and, and I wrote uh, a story about us. Their <laughs> toxic relationship spread to everybody else in this movie because everybody was fighting with everybody in this movie and everybody was... I thought there it was their way or the highway. It sounds like the worst movie set to have ever worked on. <laughs> wow, but I think Nicolas Cage has spoken highly of this movie like recently. He has, right? but he was incredibly difficult to work with because he wanted to do everything like real deal method. The bat was a big we can we'll, we can talk about the bat later. The bat was a big point of contention for weeks bat. on set of this movie. <laughs> wow, for as, for to, as little as it's yeah, in this movie, yeah. And at this point, he had just done uh, Peggy Sue got married and uh, Raising Arizona. So like his star is oh, okay. starting wow. to rise, but he's mo- at this point like um, is it were and uh, Minion still got were his real saying hair. is it where Minion were saying he was mostly known as like the random Coppola that's popping up in the Coppola mm. movies because that's mm-hmm. what he had mostly done like Rumble Fish and all those yeah. Francis Ford Coppola right. cameos right. was yeah. Valley Girl like his first like I mean he was the male lead in Valley mm-hmm. Girl right mm-hmm. and I remember like Nicolas Cage and it's like he's a Coppola right. And then after that, right, it's like, to me, he's like the Raising Arizona guy. Yeah. Like, okay, he's going to yeah. be like this comedian, right? Yeah. That was the first time he was really like taken seriously outside of like nepotism, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. was Raising Arizona. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. The Coen yeah. Brothers mm-hmm. movie. And then Peggy Which is Sue a really good movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where's, it's well, really Peggy Sue Got Married was a couple of films, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And so where's like Moonstruck? Mm. That's after this. Okay. Is, so, it, is it like right after this? I feel see. like it's very close. I think it's, yeah. bef- it feels like it's before this, but it, it might could be, be wrong. This. I thought it was. Because then you go from like Moonstruck to Vampire's Kiss, and then he still had a career. So, oh, no, I mean, Moonstruck was right before this. Raising Arizona okay. and Moonstruck are the same year. Okay. Yeah, he had a good year in 1987. That's, that's a good year yeah. for Nick Cage. Yep. Moonstruck was up for like. Was he up for an Oscar? I remember. I remember Oscar his clip. performance being like beloved. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With the one where uh, Cher slaps him. Snap out of it. Snap mm-hmm. out of it. Was it was yeah. played at the Oscars. Yep. But I can't remember if it was for the movie or for him or for her. Um, okay. So Nicolas Cage. Right. Mm-hmm. I guess this is the question then. So this would be like. Later on, we're seeing Nicolas Cage is like Cage Rage yep. and doing mm-hmm. weird shit like the Wicker Man. Mm-hmm. Right or uh, drive angry. Yeah. Both previous episodes. Go listen to them if you haven't already. <laughs> those had I seen this before, I would have been like, those movies would have all been expected. Yeah, coming yeah. out coming yeah. out of this. Yeah. yeah, and so okay, this uh, we're all saying that we're new to this movie. I saw it just a couple months ago for the first time, so relatively new to this movie. Mm-hmm. Had skipped it for many years because basically I thought it looked bad. You know, it's like, <laughs> and it's not being done any favors by the artwork. I think which kind of makes the artwork it look is bad. like. I don't know. It, it doesn't really sell the movie very well. The tone. It of looks it, like a weird romantic know. comedy or something. Yeah, yeah. you looks, wouldn't. I, you, I wouldn't be able to no. tell you what's happening on the front the of this. The artwork looks like Once Bitten. Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. That's yeah. the first thing that came to my head. I'm like, this is Nick Cage's Once Bitten. It yeah. Feels like. Yeah, and I mean, I'm a fan of vampire movies, but I've always oh, yeah. avoided this one because it's like it's Nicolas Cage. It's going to be a goofy, you know, vampire movie. Um, yeah. Understanding now that he's in his coffin couch. Yes. And that's those are Jennifer Beale's yeah. legs. Yeah. 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 Now understand. that I understand. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. It's yeah. great. <laughs> Have we put Nicolas Cage on the Saturday night for Oh, show for a while. Yeah. 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 For several Drive Angry and Con Air. Mm-hmm. Wicker Man. Wicker Man. Mm-hmm. Right. The color yeah. out okay. of space. Yep, 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 yeah. Like he's been on the um, are we adding anybody else from this movie? Maria uh, I Conchita, think Ma- Alonso. Mar- yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Predator two, this and uh what was the other one? Um, the Running Man. Running man. Right. Yep. Running man. Um, was she already on the wall? Not positive. We should we should look at the wall. Maybe no. I'll okay. take a look. Well, um, so yeah, and Wild at Heart. I remember being the other one that, that like that at was some after point, this. Yeah, yep. that was after mm-hmm. where you're like, okay, this guy is you know a a, we- a cinematic weirdo, right? He's gonna go <laughs> yeah. his own way. But then, like, I remember his career. Um, 
Well, he won an Oscar, right, for Leaving Las Vegas. And yep. it seemed like once he was in demand, he became like action movie superstar and got all those like, you know, Con Airs. The and, Rock. Uh, He's in The Rock, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. Rock's great. Yeah. Face yeah. Off <laughs> and uh, National yeah. Treasures and all yep. that. So yes. now he's like, he can kind of, he can do anything at this point. He's like set up his bona fides, right? He right. can be comedy, action, drama. And then City of Angels. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, yeah City right. of Angels. Fucking hell. One of the most oh, depressing man. movies. Right? Oh. Okay, so, so based depressing. on this movie, then, my question is, is Nicolas Cage a good actor? I yes, mean, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean... A, he's a great actor. <laughs> for, for, is he a good actor? No, he's a fan-fucking-tastic actor. Yeah, I was, I was like, you can show me 20 vampires kisses or, you know, w- Wicker Man drive angries, whatever, doesn't erase Pig. That movie still exists. Oh, yeah, yeah, Pig yeah, is yeah. amazing. And, yeah. like, I I love both ends of the spectrum, yeah. you know, I, yeah. and everything in between. So, yeah, yes. it, could ha- yeah, it could happen to you. Yeah. 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 Right. That's a great movie. And that's one of my favorite. Romantic that's a good comedies. sleepy af- like Sunday afternoon. It's like, ah, yeah. This yeah. is comforting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is kind of like the year that um, Hollywood is kind of celebrating Nicolas Cage, I suppose, with the, the movie, The Unbearable Weight of Massive, Massive Talent, Talent yeah. where yeah. he yeah. plays a version of himself and kind of has a retrospective uh, look mm-hmm. back at his own career. Mm-hmm. It's a nice capper, you know, I hope yeah, he, right. it's not the end. I hope it keeps going. But um, so, but I guess the, I asked that question only because I know that like contemporary critics, when they reviewed this movie at the time, I mean, it was a box office flop, mm-hmm. major flop. Um, and a lot of that was based on people saying like, this movie is horrible. Uh, Nicholas Cage is a bad actor. He is just going way over the top. And so but those, is there an those equation two things between aren't necessarily synonymous? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, he is going way over the top in this. Is it bad? Kinda. But is he bad? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I guess you gotta explain that to me. How is it how is it it's not it, like he's good, but he's his performance is bad. Back. But he's is, portraying but is, a madman. Is, is so. every is every actor good in everything they do if they're a good actor? No, not always. No, yeah. because there but a go. lot of that. I mean, as I as I see more movies, it always seems to be that like it feels like an actor. You know, they do the same thing every time they're at bat, right? You know, they go out. Well, okay, they try new things and that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's like basically an actor is as good as they can be in any given movie, but it's usually it's because of the way the shot, the shooting was covered Mm -hmm. or the direction they were given. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of time when you see an actor give a bad performance, it's like, it's just because it wasn't edited or, you know, uh, directed well. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they might just not be the right choice. It doesn't mean they're a bad actor. Mm -hmm. It's not the right choice. for that part. We're we're looking at you, Keanu Reeves and I'm looking at (laughs) Javier Bardem and the fucking Ricardo. Yeah. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. It's actually one of the better parts of that movie. As far as I'm concerned, but that's just me. He, yeah, but he, the thing is, he looks absolutely nothing well, like Desi I mean, Arnaz. A, he has a villain face. Like he, does he doesn't a have face. a baby face. He has a hard yeah. chiseled, craggy face. Yeah, which there's nothing wrong with that. But that's just great not skyfall. Right. But like we said, just, <laughs> yeah. but to your point, no not right for the yeah, part. That movie yeah. where he takes half his face out. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> so we would say that Nicolas Cage is doing something on purpose in this movie. Absolutely. Oh, oh he's yeah. making choices. Intentionally. Yeah. Absolutely yes. making choices. And the director is on board. Yep. Um, okay, because yeah. that's what it feels like. And the does. editor saved it all. <laughs> mm, yeah. That's how that line works. Yeah. <laughs> this movie got financed because he attached to it. Nick Cage? Because Nick Cage signed on. That's why it got the budget. Okay. And then th- this movie has like a history. I read this whole article on it and it's like 10 pages long because this movie had so much drama being made. Mm-hmm. But Nicolas Cage signed on because he really liked the part and he wanted to like do a movie of like the descent of a madman and he really wanted to do that and then there was so much tension on set and a lot of creative differences he quit and then they were going to hire Judd Nelson and Judd Nelson said yeah for a million dollars and like this movie's whole budget was two million dollars so they were like yeah no we can't afford you Judd Nelson and then Nick Cage called them back and said I'm actually I don't want to drop out I want the part back and they gave it back to him you know who was originally cast in this Hmm, movie no Dennis Quaid. Oh, wow. That would be a very oh, different movie. Wow. And he quit to go do Interspace. 
But <laughs> well, lateral move. Lateral and then move. Opened it up for Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't want to watch that version of this movie. Yeah, and it sounds very boring. Well, yeah. the, but that's what kind of what I wonder. So that's when, just a lot. Like, apparently, was up for this part yeah. as well. But. When you when you <laughs> when you imagine like what it must have been like as a script versus the movie that you. Get, oh yeah, uh, mm-hmm. you know uh. it's like so. This was written, what like. It's like a serial comedy, or I guess what you call it, deadpan comedy. Black right? comedy. Mm-hmm. And that's because every other character except for him in the movie is basically playing it straight, Correct. right? Yeah. Yep. But he's the wild man who's out mm-hmm. there doing weirdo yeah. things, and everybody either and seems to react to it or doesn't, and yeah. that becomes and funny. The, like, the tone is really weird. Like, the cinematography does not match the comedy. Like the score doesn't match the comedy. No, there it is. The whole movie's playing it straight. Yeah, yeah, it's very odd. Yeah, I thought the music was in on it, and it, just because it was some places where it would do stingers, it was yeah. like, okay, that's a comedy yeah. stinger right. that they're doing. Yeah. And that's yeah. again a lot easier to do after that. But yes, the com- the music is in on the joke. But mm-hmm. I think we were all in on the joke because I heard you guys laughing. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. we laughed a lot. That's really hilarious. Yeah. But yeah. that may be because now you've had. 30 years of Nicolas Cage and you kind of have an idea of what to expect whereas oh, yeah. audiences then yeah. may be like what the hell is going on oh definitely I can imagine people were uh, uh, shocked I, by this performance <laughs> yeah. I would say at that time I also mm-hmm. think that we uh, just the, the four of us are prepared for movies differently mm-hmm. yeah yeah we approach movies differently yeah. than right. like your general movie going audience and yeah. having just seen Nick Cage have a bathroom freak out not too many years ago it's mm-hmm. been very recent mm-hmm. it all kind of matches up Mm-hmm. He has said that uh, I think that this is one of his all-time favorite either movie experiences or performances. Perfor- both, yeah. yeah. Okay, and why does he say that? Of all the movies he's done, I probably, mean, probably the freedom. Yeah, the, yeah. I was gonna say the freedom to just. This was like an indie movie set. As indie as they come, they kind of just made shit up as they went along, and he got to do whatever he wanted. And <laughs> he he probably had the most power in that. I'm not sad, I'm sure. As you're saying these things, I'm picturing the meme of him going, you don't say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, I guess you would in some ways call it an experimental performance where he is just going, uh, It's there's a lot of ticks. Yeah. 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 He claims <laughs> he claims there are scenes in this movie that were cut that are some of his like career best work, and he hopes someday that the full cut will be released. I hope so. Oh, too. Now I love like, the fights. <laughs> yeah, he's doing some really so weird shit. It's like it's like Matchstick Men, but like it is ten times the ticking. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. It's I I do love how you can see uh, his future movies in this movie. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah this the blueprint. You can. Yeah, it's crazy, but it's so fun. he went back to the well. You're like, oh, right. something absolutely. Here. He's like, yeah. I like that. I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he seems like he's a weird, you know, actor as far as like what his inspirations are. I remember he played Ghost Rider. That's right. He's mm-hmm. been in the Marvel yes. universe. Yes. Yep. And he, I saw an interview where he said he's got a pet snake, and the snake when it was trying to like, you know, hypnotize its prey would move its head back and forth. And so he's like, Ghost Rider should do that. <laughs> and so in the movie. Yeah, he yeah, commits, Ghost Rider man. Does, and you're like, what in the hell is he doing? <laughs> but it's because of his pet snake. Well, you know, like he had that interview recently um, where they were, t- it must have been promotion for massive talent, but they were kind of talking about his career, like in oh, general. GQ does this thing where they bring in actors and they have them break down like 20 of their Right, ba- their favorite acting right. jobs and everything. They've done it for a bunch of people. It's actually yeah. a really great series. Go right, watch it. And it was like a half hour one of Nick Cage. And he was saying he was like, "Yeah, I did take some jobs just because I needed a paycheck, but I never once phoned it." And he said, "I always gave my best. And I always committed." And I believe him. Oh, like absolutely. I, I believe that a hundred percent. But I think that's part of it, right? He sees like everything, even if you know, even. If- I mean, now that you're saying that, I'm like, okay, so Ghost Rider was like, he was like, okay, Ghost Rider, it's a paycheck, and Bob, what do I know about? Well, I think he said he was a fan of the comics, but, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, it could be something where, like, how am I going to do that? How am I going to fit into this? And so the opportunity is, I get to do something weird. I get mm-hmm. to explore, like, acting, right? Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is he doing a silent movie performance in this movie? Yes. That was his inspiration. Because it feels like. No, for <laughs> especially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He does a lot of mimicking of like and yeah extreme facial expressions. And- I was say, there's definitely a lot of Nosferatu, and I thought yep. that there was um, 
there was some mirroring with the the mimes outside of the apartment oh, building. Get yeah. the street mimes. They yeah. just hang out street on mimes. The, on a yeah. residential street. Yeah. Yep. And I also believe if Nosferatu could talk, he would also say, uh, uh, "Good God, the sun!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then what he turned a corner. <laughs> like I imagine that dialogue would also be a part of that movie. <laughs> so good. Oh, that that reminds me. Ironically, uh, so Nicholas Cage is right, uh, either right now or coming soon, playing playing a fucking vampire in Dracula. Yes, I can't oh my, wait. I, now I can't wait. Can't we wait. might have to take a. F- Freak show field trip for yeah. that. I agree. In field, and then he said his inspiration there was uh, like he watched The Ring, and he's like oh. her, the way she moves. I'm oh, like, love it! What? Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I, don't know what I am sold. It's gonna be great. That if means, that, if give that me a trailer fucking, now. That pu- fucking piece of woods not in there in that movie at some <laughs> yeah. point is something. I want on no. The wall I just want him to be carrying it the whole movie without saying a word about yeah. it. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I want. It's the whole goddamn movie carrying was. I know he has around. to make a reappearance. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, so God the, damn, he's a national treasure, <laughs> right? <laughs> if the movie wasn't a comedy, if it didn't have Nicolas Cage in it, okay. would it be too dark? It would be Habit. <laughs> yeah, so no, this is Habit with a budget. I was gonna say when I heard you say that when we were watching this Habit, and I was like, my God, it is. Yeah, it's Habit with a budget <laughs> with and a budget. comedy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, Which yeah, previous episode, go listen. Yeah, that's right. We covered that. Um, the I guess because some of the subject matter, it feels like I mean, basically, part of the movie seems to be watching uh, like an American psycho or well-off, mm. uh, you know, guy in the well. I, yeah, a Wall Street yuppie kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, this is that eighties. Yeah, Wall Street culture. Yeah. yeah, but he's not Wall Street. He's no, a literary, literary agent. He's a literary agent, but still, it's the same culture. But he yeah. has a power dynamic over a receptionist in her. She's a clerk she's, in his yeah, like secretary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and just torments the living shit out of this lady to the point where that's Maria Conchita Alonso. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this where, poor woman. Yeah, where that's where I'm like, if you yeah. played this movie, it's like almost his caricature kind of, um, yeah, you know, performance kind of takes the edge off if of what actually a, happened. If he was absolutely, happened. Yeah. It, it definitely does because sometimes it doesn't in this movie. Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh, yeah, oh, okay, we went there. Yeah. But yeah. yes, it does take it off for the rest of the like movie. So it would be in, it's in, intensely dark. Yeah, if, right. he wasn't if not so for over Nick the Cage. Top. Yes. If he wasn't so over the top, it would be like. Too far. Mm-hmm. It would be hard to watch. It'd be, yeah, it would not be. It would be monstrous. It'd be not yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, and I think they're going for that because yeah. he eventually becomes a well. I mean, uh, well, uh, I was going to say uh, a literal monster, but uh, yeah. I don't know that, that that's entirely true. Yeah, we need to get into that. <laughs> yeah, I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah, and because uh, a little bit of reality, uh, it's all the back playing with here. And there's also uh, his uh, relationship with other women. Mm-hmm. I guess this is how we meet him. He is uh, seeking uh, uh, the advice of a therapist because he has a bunch of one night stands, mm-hmm. and like it just seems like that's how he treats women. He, yeah. he he lusts after women, and then once he's had them sexually, then he's done. Mm-hmm. And, he's a womanizer. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yes. And so. Um, then he meets. Then he find the one woman he can't get rid of. Yeah, right. Or, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what's going on? Uh, yeah. So I have questions about that. Okay. Yeah. So this is um, Jennifer Beals that we're mm-hmm. talking about. He yep. has. Yes. He meets her at a bar. They go home together. Mm-hmm. End up in bed, and she ends up biting him. She is a vampire. Mm-hmm. Ends up biting him. What happens? Oh, right. Okay. So for <laughs> just what happens? You can just stop there. I was going to say what happens before this. Because there's some other character stuff. Right? Yeah, right. but like, I mean, sp- but, but specifically, yeah. that yeah. we can go back. But like, yeah, we're gonna so have what- to go back. But yeah, that's where my questions lie. Okay, did did he meet a vampire? Did, did she bite him? Like, I believe that they went home together. I believe they slept together. It may have gotten a little rough. I believe all of that. But that's where I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I, after that, <laughs> well, remember the next morning he's shaving and he cuts himself on his neck. Yeah, I I don't. I think that at the most they went home together and that's it. I, okay. But I don't think she even like bit him. I think yeah. that was all. Everything from that's, then after that is in okay, his head. Okay, that's what I was wondering. And yeah. I'm and I'm and that's where my questions begin. Mm. What I, is I, happening? I have answers to all your questions. <laughs> that the bat that flew into his house had rabies. When it flew in, it bit okay. him in the neck. 
the rest of the movie is a rabies, is fever, a rabies dream? fever dream. <laughs> okay. And See, it works. You know what? Okay, but sure. if the bat doesn't bite it, you're, you're saying but, that it just happened off screen or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something because like that. Because he does say to the therapist that like, he was like fighting with the bat or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I believe that, but that's never like portrayed in the movie. That's just no, no, not at all. Us filling in the blanks, but that's the only thing that makes sense. I mean, aside from a delirium from changing into, I mean, it could go the other way mm-hmm. as well. Just well, it, he it is seems changing. Like, yeah, that that this is a guy maybe with uh, you know already some kind of slippery slopes, uh, you know, psychologically, psychologically yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and that the bat could be something. A bat flies into his apartment while he's there with a girl one night, mm-hmm. and they have to leave the apartment because he's trying to shoo this bat away. <laughs> And it's possible just that, you know, imagery or whatever somehow triggers this idea of vampires mm-hmm. in his mind. And then, mm-hmm. you know, then this the rest of this thing like unfolds in his head. I mean, right. I guess having seen the whole thing, I'm under the impression that like, you know, most of this is not taking place in objective yes. reality. Mm. Right. Um, okay. But the movie is like so showing we, this. We, so do we think that some of this. Like the sessions with the therapist at the beginning and throughout the movie, those are real. Yes, do we think? Yeah, I think, I think those so. are real. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But then I, at some point it switches to just being right therapy Fantasy, in his head. Yeah, yeah. right. Because mm-hmm. he's obviously a narcissist, but is there some sort of like psychosis there? Is that what we're? I think thinking? that's what the movie's about. Yeah. Okay. It's like yeah. a mental breakdown. Yeah. And okay. that's brought on. It seems like from like intense. Uh, loneliness or well, I always get the impression that this is going on like a lot of times when I see movies that take place in New York and good people of New York I've never visited your fine city oh. but it seems like a lot of your filmmakers uh, tend to you know uh, make movies where the characters are always surrounded by you know thousands of people but they're Fair islands enough, onto yeah. themselves and they never can make any kind of connection nobody knows anybody and that breeds this kind of loneliness and eventually psychosis mm-hmm. in, <laughs> in a lot of these characters, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so every the the way the reason I say this is because not only is he fixated on like you know his womanizing, but every scene of the movie seems to put him alone in a shot that has a couple. Uh, Mm -hmm. In the background, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. moving through it and making out. They're always making out. There's always a couple making out somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he always reacts like, you know, Mm -hmm. violently in some cases to it. He's an incel. Yeah. That's what he wants is he just wants to be loved. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But at the same time, he keeps rejecting all possibilities of that. Mm -hmm. Except for Alma, his secretary, who he just Mm -hmm. tortures. (laughs) <laughs> psychologically for no for seemingly no reason yeah she just is available to be a target i guess mm-hmm. yeah okay yep. well mm-hmm. we're gonna have to we're gonna have to find out where all this goes yeah. so he, we're gonna have to put on our psych our psychologist hat and yeah. dive into this <laughs> he meets uh prior to meeting the vampire woman he meets uh casey lemons um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who's the star of uh, Candyman and uh silence of the lambs yes. who also she later became a director oh uh she did a movie called eve's bayou which oh yeah, yeah 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 and um the caveman's valentine is that the one with uh samuel jackson and then just recently harriet those were all her she's oh, oh nice. awesome yeah And I think she's still acting also. But um, so she's in this movie as this girl that he picks up and brings back to his apartment. And then he treats her like shit. So Mm -hmm. what what happens there? The first time or the second time? Well, just over the course of the Well, well, the first time he brings her back, isn't that when the bat shows up? That's when the bat shows up. And they end up leaving. But they go to her place. So they still like hook up and everything. But then later on, after he thinks he's turning, um, they go on another date to an art exhibit. And as soon as they walk in, like they look at a piece and he says, I'm going to go to the bathroom and then leaves her there. And not just leaves. He goes like out a back door, like yeah. doubles back, gets a cab and like, and tells the cab high driver, like it punch it, it and high. Yeah. It like he's in a chase. Yeah. Like, just fucking catch me if you can or some shit up in here. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's cold blooded. Right. Yeah. He's a, he's a rat bastard, which yeah. I guess makes it kind of hard to sympathize with his character. I don't know. Did you sympathize with his character? No, <laughs> no, no, I didn't really. no, it's not really. Uh, aside from the fact that we are at an advanced, this is a heightened situation. So I don't, uh, yeah, I can't uh, sympathize with that man. <laughs> I don't no, think so. And especially no. like, with and, the way, th- I mean, 
I know that they're portraying that he's like a lonely guy, but like the way he treats women, he like I said, he's a narcissist and he's a womanizer. Yes. And he's the creator of his own turmoil. You know well, what I mean? And he's a piece of shit to Alva before yeah. she, he even turns. Like he's a dick from the jump in the yes, movie. Absolutely. It's just turning into a quote unquote vampire just like amplifies that mm. part yeah. of him. Like a dick with a very interesting accent that comes and goes. This yeah, fucking accent. That? I don't know. I don't know what this is. It, he sounds like Mr. Burns. He like, does. He's got he the really nasally does. kind of like, yes. I don't know, like posh kind of speech that is trying to sound like upper crusty. He's like, yeah, but, yes. quite right. But it comes off yes. as very like fake and put on. Yeah. yeah. It's so bizarre. It's and like then a, he's like, I'm from Philadelphia. I'm like, that's not a Philly accent. No, that's the opposite of a Philly that accent. That's not a Philly yeah. accent. I know, because I remember like uh, old timey Hollywood movies would have a thing called the transatlantic. The transatlantic accent. But I don't think yeah. that, that was No, that's the, not no. what this is. That's Mr. Burns. I don't know what this is. Yeah. And he. And, like, the way he pronounces certain words is, like, exceptionally nasally. Like, did you notice the pronunciation of his last name changes a lot in this movie? What's his last Lou. Name? Lou. 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 Some people say Lou. Lou. He says Lou. Yeah. And it's, like, L-E-U-W. Peter Lou. Yeah. Lou. Yeah. Peter yeah. Lou. He really takes it for a walk. Lou. He does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. The se- this time around watching it, mm-hmm. like, I'd seen it before, so it didn't really, uh, uh, you know, strike me as much. Mm-hmm. But I do remember that first watch was, like, what in the... Like, it takes a while to be like because i know what he sounds like right you know? right yeah <laughs> it's like what are you doing with your accent mm-hmm. here so it like a choice. It's right from the get-go he's like i'm gonna be an alien in this fucking movie yep. yeah. <laughs> um that would make more sense that he's like an alien come to earth than right. what actually happens in this movie <laughs> Yeah, like the way he was, like, like when the when the movie started and he's like laying on the couch talking to a shrink. Yeah. The way he's talking, I was like, okay, so he's already a vampire. Yeah, like that's yeah. that's why he sounds. No, like No, that this, was right? the normal that version. Was the norm. yes. Yeah, I was like, like all right, a, a well, vampire I don't know where who's just over being a vampire is like, I got a job as a literary agent. <laughs> yeah, it's the only thing yeah. that's interesting I don't anymore. Know. It's kind of what it seemed like, but I was like, nope, that's just where we're at. All right, that's our baseline. Yeah. yeah. And he continues to torture uh, Casey Lemons, and he seems to keep going back and forth. Like I think there's, there's like moments where, because he, uh, you know, after he blows her off, she calls his answering machine. She's like, "Never fucking call me again." And so then one night when he's out, he calls her, and I'm always like, "Don't fucking pick up the goddamn phone. Why? Do you, why does everybody pick up the phone? Because well, this is I pre-caller think, ID, yeah. right? And everyone's lonely. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But what, I think that's it. It's like even though she knows that this is bad for her, there's still a, a chance, right? Yeah. It's like it's just this weird interplay between people that you know you get kind of. And uh, it's my understanding on. that in the '80s you just answered the phone. Yeah, right. yeah. I get that, you never know what's going on. After <laughs> yeah. you know who it is, you just go like, "No, I'm not talking to you," and you hang up. But she engages him in conversation. He invites her out to another date. Yeah, but unfortunately, I do, I do kind of understand to an extent because if someone did that to me, I'd be like, "Well, I got to hear this." What's he? Yeah, doing? now yeah. I need to hear it. Now out. I got to hear yeah. what he's gonna fucking yeah. say. What you the know, fuck like, is this freak yeah. gonna tell me now? After out of curiosity, I'm like, "All right, what he's gonna tell you? I'm a vampire." Um, so yeah, Jennifer Beals, uh, he, so, so the relationship there, I guess, like, I mean, she's just like a straight up vampire, like right from the time that we meet her, he picks her up at the bar, takes Mm -hmm. her home and she immediately puts the bite on. Flawless red lipstick. Flawless. Jennifer Beals, I never really thought about it, has a good like face for a vampire. She does. Does that make sense? Like she has a face that looks She looks great. She fits it perfectly. She looks great in this movie. She does. Mm -hmm. She does. I don't. Is that Mm -hmm. a wig? I don't think so. Don't Isn't think that her so. thing? Her is having curly hair? hair? I think it's, that's her. I think her they hair. colored it, probably. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, because they're going for that. Because I got like, I'm not sure if it had red tinge. It had to it, a red tinge. Yeah. Like it had like that kind of. But like, I mean, if you saw her hair in fucking flash dance. Yeah, yeah. it is yeah. poofy yeah, and curly like there. That. Yeah. So yeah. I think okay. maybe they no, did put a little tint in it. But yeah, that's her hair. Yeah. Some uh, <laughs> some some work on costuming could have helped a little bit though, as we talked about. You start to see her nipple patches many times in this yeah, movie. Yeah, pa- like like her pasties are on display. Yeah, and it's constantly. Like, just just put her in a bra. Then, yeah, like, just you leave her in a bra if yeah. you're okay with them showing. Right, because it's very distracting. Yeah, it's, it's like, really distracting. Yeah. I'm not supposed to be seeing that, but I'm seeing it. <laughs> yeah, it's like during a time. love scene, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, did they not have the time? It's to multiple redo times it? too. Right. Well, it could have been the same. I think it was no, 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 early that same scene. She's like on her back on the bed, and the camera's like panning. Oh yeah, and you I see saw it, it then, yeah, because I thought she was yeah. wearing a bra. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, it's so weird. 
yeah. but they're like square. But like, and then they're yeah. like, uh, they look like band aids. Like yeah. Stuck, they yeah. look yeah. like good pasties. Yeah. Just like a, that's going to hurt to get off later. But yeah. that's, that, I mean, that's what they use for those scenes. Like those in like snatch patches. They're just yep. like big band aids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I heard the name for that once. The Merkin. The Merkin. Yeah, the yeah, Merkin. Yeah. Merkin. Merkin. I was like, Although what? Snatch the- patch. <laughs> that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> um,. <laughs> So the vampire keeps showing up at inopportune times, has knowledge of everything that he's done when she's not around, which I guess is the clue that she's not actually there. Right. But like the the morning after, there's this really weird scene where he's uh, he cuts his neck with the razor. And then you're like, well, did she bite him or did he just cut his neck with the razor? And he's yeah. trying to bring her coffee and he's talking to her and he's sitting down there and there's like no one Nobody on the there. bed. Yeah. And then it's like he realizes that there's no one on the bed and then his a hand starts shaking and you're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, so that's know. when the psychosis starts. Yeah. So he continues to deteriorate through the course of this movie, I guess, because she keeps, uh, you know, biting him. She interrupts the uh, date. He was going to go on with Casey Lemon. So the poor girl's left alone in a bar. I think that's her last scene in the movie, right? It's I like, believe so, yeah. She's like, okay, screw this guy. He stood yeah. me up again. Um, and then, um, then it's like as he continues to get weirder, he just kind of keeps on... Uh, like focusing on tormenting all of it. There's this, like this whole subplot about a uh, contract mm-hmm. of a, a writer that's lost. And he's just like telling her at some point, like in this really weird. And I think it's a scene that has been spawned many a meme. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that, the one. <laughs> yeah. So, well, tell us about if they, if you haven't seen this scene, it is probably one of the ones that ends up, clipped from this movie mm-hmm. i assume on, on youtube or whatever a lot mm-hmm. where he well there's one where he jumps up on that yeah like i, I found like, you and jumps up on the and then chases her down the hall <laughs> and chases her into the bathroom and like this is just happening in their office at work and everyone's just going about their day like this is totally normal could you imagine your boss chasing you all the way into the bathroom and trying to assault you and then everyone at your work just like pretending like it's not happening my yeah, well, boss, yeah. fuck. A lot of them, it seemed like in that scene, a lot of people were in shock, but, but what makes it right. worse is when he's explaining it, like him and the boys are having yeah. a yeah, locker, know, locker room talk. Yeah, yeah, big laugh about this in the boardroom afterwards. Like, oh, she thinks she deserves a raise after that. Yeah, she fucking does. Yeah, hazard pay maybe Jesus. too. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she threatens yeah, him with a gun. Real. There's like an old lady who's like, what the fuck is going on? Which is kind <laughs> and of then look, And then right looks at the camera. right into the camera. <laughs> yep. I love her. And yeah. lingers for a minute. Yeah. yeah it does seem odd that that just uh, that you can get away with that yeah. at this point. It's like some Mad Men shit, but this is well, that's like what I'm the saying. 80s. Like the Mad, like, yeah. like the Mad Men era just bled over yeah. into this, and now you're just chasing secretaries yep. all over the place. Yeah, because it's a power dynamic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Absolutely. just like completely running unchecked. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's and his his uh, vampire schizophrenia at this point is uh, is making him go back and forth on it too. Because he mm-hmm. he chases her into the bathroom, then he apologizes, then he goes to great lengths to go see her again. Then he assaults her. Mm-hmm. It's a whole thing. And in between all this, he sees his therapist to talk about the problem he's having with her because, yeah, this big contract for this <laughs> author or whatever has been filed in the wrong folder, and this is pre computer. So, you like, would file it, right? You would just, you just put, it put it in the file. In the file. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's. Who? He, he, Who? He, he is. <laughs> he Who misfiled it? He can't. He literally cannot comprehend the fact that it could be placed <laughs> in the wrong folder. Who like, would that, do that? Why like, would that happen? And he, he like takes this as his therapist has inside information right. as someone did this and yeah. he, she has the answer and won't tell him is how he takes yeah. this information. This is like, a, I mean, as a performance, yeah. this is because you're like, okay, what are the lines and how are you re- But he is like, I don't understand this. Like, I'm losing my mind. Like, mm-hmm. if you took a, a file and put it in a folder, when you go back there, it should be there. It would yeah. be there. It would yeah. be there. And she's yeah. like, yes. And then it's like, oh, right. Yeah, it would. But it's not there. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, but someone could have misfiled it. And he's like, misfiled it. Misfiled it. Who did, Who did that? that? Yes. <laughs> she's like, how would I know that? Who did it? Yeah. And he's like grilling her, convinced mm-hmm. she knows. And then my favorite scene in the movie happens where he says, how could she misfile it? It's alphabetical order. And then he stands up <laughs> and does the wildest Nick Cage like hand gestures. Hey, 
B, C, D, and goes through the whole alphabet while punching the air, reaching for things, yeah. eyes bugging out. the last screaming. four letters. <laughs> yes. This is better than naming all five boroughs. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> Like, you think he's just going to go, like, A, B, C, D. No. No, no, no. No, no. as soon as he started, I'm like, go the whole way. Yeah. Go the whole way. <laughs> that's, what this, that's what this movie is right now. Go the whole way. By the time he, he gets to the end, he's seriously, like, screaming and convulsing the last four yeah. letters. Mm-hmm. It is perfection. And he's posing and all that. Like, yes. he's got, you know, like, mm-hmm. where he's putting his hands. I know, you know, and mm-hmm. a lot of the Nick Cage pointing and, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's like. It's punching perfection. the air, grabbing yeah. the air, and so it's all like Wonderful. a planned out performance, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing. It's like it doesn't feel like it's necessarily improv. I mean, that's no, what I'm it's saying. Not. It's like it feels from like what he hear, knew what it, he was doing every, you know. Mm-hmm. From what I hear, it was highly choreographed. Yeah, this, mo- this movie is not improvised. This, yeah. Like he, it may seem like he's he's working, uh, like, like he's uh, unhinged or outside or mm-hmm. or or you know. Um, but apparently, yeah, highly choreographed stuff. He went over it a lot. and I mean, I do believe that probably some of the people that we're seeing on the street don't know what's going on. They do on. not. Yeah. Okay. The, the scene later where he's running around screaming out a vampire and then the end <laughs> act with the stake, those people do not know they're in a movie. Oh. Yes! <laughs> yes! They use long lenses from a distance to get all those shots. and let, So they just thought he was a street urchin doing uncomfortable things. Yeah. And they probably walked over to the set of New York Ninja and saw some dude get <laughs> shot in the throat. Or roller skating yeah, in a ninja. Yeah. Just yeah. another day in New York. Yep. So, yep. But I guess that's part of the appeal of New York movies to me. It's yeah. just like oh, yeah. how like the city just kind of folds around and Oh, absolutely. And, mm-hmm. and just, you know, like uh, I'm thinking like a, a you know, like a in a, a water over a brook and there's like a stone in the yep. middle of it. It just flows around, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then yes. the New stone York is the weird flowing. shit. It yes. goes on that they just deal with the, yeah. well, the, the handful of times I've been to New York. My favorite thing about it is everyone in New York is in their own world and they're not paying attention to you at all. They're, they're thinking about what they're doing and they're on their way. Everyone minds their own fucking business. I love it. So it doesn't surprise me that people are walking through yeah. the shit and not even reacting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, told the story in the podcast before but i walked through the set of ray donovan when they were filming and didn't know it when i was in new york yeah. <laughs> and didn't know it until i got to the other side and they were like uh by walking through here you just consent and i was like oh shit Oops, <laughs> my bad <laughs> i imagine there's a lot of fear that motivates that too you say something to the wrong person mm-hmm. like oh, yeah. you're gonna end mm-hmm. up and who's gonna do anything about it you're pretty yeah. much wild west on yeah. your own mm-hmm. uh the movie i thought uh does make New Yorkers just appear like alien beings because they're doing weird stuff in elevators. The mimes. The mimes out front. It's like <laughs> everybody everywhere is just acting very strange. And those people, some in cases, I'm like, okay, they chose them and said, so just be as weird as possible in the background <laughs> of yep. this scene. Those street mimes were happy to get on camera, I'm sure. I bet. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what about pigeons in this movie? Were they happy to be on camera, do you think? Nicholas Cage chases pigeons around. Drugged pigeons. Yep. Were they? I don't. I don't think pigeons need to be drugged. They don't move very fast. <laughs> they didn't. Apparently, they were. They didn't tell <laughs> oh, Nick Cage really? they were drugged though, no. so he could catch them. He takes one home. That's the. I love that. It. I love Nick Cage chasing a pigeon. You just <laughs> get chasing a pigeon. You're reaching for it as you walk out of screen and stuff like that. <laughs> but and chasing. Then he puts it in these like. Puts in his coat. Puts in his coat. He's, he's not just chasing a pigeon. He has plastic vampire teeth in his oh, mouth. Oh, yeah. While at this he's chasing point, he a has pigeon. plastic vampire teeth. Because he's convinced he's full vampire at this point. So he goes down to a local... Like, a cult store, yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's looking at fake teeth and just like... He can't like, afford the nice ones. The, what, what are these, nineteen ninety nine? Yeah. It's like, do you have anything... Do you have anything less? <laughs> and then he gets the. He's like, we have these three fifty, three dollar ones, and they're yeah. just the regular plastic. I'll take the plastic ones. They're just plastic <laughs> vampire teeth, and it's the it's the greatest. I like decision. though that he, when he gets the my this is one of my favorite things too. When he gets the bag, he gets this little tiny brown paper bag with the vampire teeth in it, and he hide like hucks it under his coat and hides it, and like does his hunchy run over to this park where the pigeons are. Right, sits down on the bench. Looks around, make sure no one's looking at him, and then ferociously, but like he sucks. like lifts With it joy. up like a monkey above his head, and then pulls it down in his lap and rips the bag in half like an animal, like breaking open a melon or something, and then pulls the teeth out. The more it's we, the little choices like that, you know. The more we talk about this, the more I'm convinced Jim Carrey loves this movie. Yeah, yeah, because it's inspiration. Yeah. I mean, if you just watch, I mean, if nothing else, just liar, liar in this movie, and it's just like that's that's the same guy. 
Uh, well, I mean, there's other things that he did, which, you know, like, well, I guess, okay, so the character, right, gets the fake vampire teeth because apparently he doesn't have any of his own. But the reason that he thinks he's a vampire is because he apparently can't see himself in a mirror. <laughs> Even though we can and see And then him. at one point he touches the mirror and like reacts like it's hot. Yeah. Yeah. That's not I mean, a it's the goofiest thing. thing because we he's like a dude looking at himself in the mirror. Like, we can see where, him. Where yeah. did I go? Where I'm not here. I'm not here. And then the guy in the stall is like, hey buddy, I'm trying to take a dump yeah, over yeah. here. And so, you know. And um later, um Alva, right, mm -hmm. has been threatening. She's like, I got a gun. If you touch me. Like, I'm going to shoot you. And so he corners her in, I think, the basement. But and her gun doesn't have bullets in it. It has blanks. blanks. Yeah, but he doesn't know this. No. Right? Because she's no. talked to her brother about getting some, you know, because she's like, my boss is crazy and I got to do something about this. And so she, he loads it with blanks. So he, he, so Nicholas Cage puts the gun barrel in his mouth and pulls the trigger twice. I was this nervous. scene made me I so was nervous. Also <laughs> nervous. I was like, oh god. I, maybe it's because we're living in a world where someone died recently from a gun on a movie set. But yeah. like, I, yeah. I was just like, this and could just, go so oh, wrong so easily. He puts it in easily. his mouth and he does it twice. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. It was hard to watch. <laughs> well, uh, that scene. We'll have to talk about some of the other things he puts in his mouth. So, uh, but that in that scene, oh, so ew. he thinks that he is <laughs> a <laughs> vampire because. He doesn't like. He, he didn't pulls, die. He didn't die. Yeah. Tell me about the cockroach. He uh, eats it. He finds a cockroach in his. Wait. And Nick Cage actually ate that cockroach. I was going to say he did it a twice. Real cockroach. He did it twice. Yep. Twice. Yep. Oh, had to get two takes. Yep. Yep. Coverage. Yikes. Yep. He also he eats. said he regretted it. <laughs> he yep. regretted he? it heavily. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's like this because I think they wanted to just eat like a raw egg or something like this. Yeah, like, no. it was originally a raw egg. Yeah. No, we will uh, in an ode to Renfield. We will eat a cockroach. Mm -hmm. Well, that's okay because I remember when we watched. I think the seventy nine version of Dracula. Mm -hmm. The dude eats like a real cockroach, yep. and that just actually. So I'm like, okay, other folks have done it, but I mean that's commitment, I suppose. It you know it as gross. an actor. Um, he also apparently eats the pigeon. Mm -hmm. yep. so. Yeah, this one not for real. No. For all we know. Yeah, because then he retches, uh, you know, like a lot through the movie because he's trying to now he's like, you know, he believes that he's a vampire. His uh, phantom demon lover is telling her, her telling him that he's a vampire. So, you know what you need to do. And so with now armed with his plastic fake teeth, he heads out into the New York night. <sighs> in search of victims, the poor uh, pigeon being the first one, and then eventually to a nightclub. Yep. Oh, this is after, sorry, after the scene you were talking about, which is another meme uh, favorite, the I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire. Yes, I'm he, a vampire. he literally runs down the street <laughs> screaming, I'm a vampire at people. Some of the cuts are shocking in this movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, the cut twos are just like, whoa. It's crazy. Yeah. Comedic? Does it work? Uh, for me, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I, I think it's great. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes quick cuts away to something like that, completely out of context, is the funniest thing. Yeah. Like, sometimes yeah. they just cut to him standing in a room in his boxers, and it's the funniest. Yeah. Funniest. Or a look on his face where he's like, yep. yeah. Or he's trying to eat the pillow. Or oh my god, the bite! Like, but the wind up to the bite. Like right? he like throws yeah. his head back and like shakes his head, opens his mouth really wide, and then like just, chomps down on it really it's hard. Just the most random shit in this yeah. movie. Because he's practicing at that point. <laughs> everything you know, to get a has feel for it. Everything is a wind up though. Like he's always got to work his way up into whatever he's weird body <laughs> tick he's doing. Yeah, and I think because they showed like at some point he's watching Nosferatu on TV, yep. that I, be I became aware watching him. I'm like, okay, he's doing like a Max Shrek yep. yeah. thing where yeah. he's got his head low, his shoulders up high, you right. know, the big uh, collar on the uh, suit, and he's got his hands out like you know, yeah. and he's walking around like Max Shrek. But even when he when he comes up when he first enters the club. Because he walks up to steps, it almost looks like he's floating up to those steps. Yeah, I yeah, kind of look. Does. I was like, "Is he floating?" <laughs> but you can just You're floating, barely see. You float, man. <laughs> yeah. Do we talk about his coffin situation at all? No, I was just gonna say we need to talk about the couch coffin. <laughs> <laughs> he is at a certain point. He has wrecked his entire apartment. Like gone yeah. through on camera. That yeah. was real. Losing yeah, his shit on camera. Yeah, yeah. that was Breaking not furniture stage smashing. glass. That was all real. For, like you, could, the light bulb explodes and sparks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, it real. looks very real. Yeah, this is dangerous as fuck. Like this is yeah. a small room, and he's he smashing a lot of stuff. Destroys it. 
but then he <laughs> he fashions he fashions himself <laughs> he fashions uh, a himself coffin. a coffin by <sighs> turning his couch upside down and propping the arms up on books. It's a black leather and put, couch and, put it, and putting pillows underneath. So when he lifts it up, it literally creaks and it looks yeah. like a coffin like lid. A coffin. Yeah, that is a great it's addition beautiful. by the, oh, the yeah, Foley artist. The Foley artist, <laughs> the whatever whoever set designer came up with that. That was yeah. brilliant genius. as well. It's a genius. That's great. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. Well, he also, so yeah, as he approaches his girl in the club, mm -hmm. right? Like, there's this weird, like, she thinks maybe he's, you know, like, he's weird, but he's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, this whole thing's funny. done, like, yeah. silent. She's also coked out, so, like, yeah, who knows how she's true. saying it. We see her yeah, do we a see her doing a, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so he, he kills her. He basically, he becomes, you know, he thinks he's a vampire, he bites her, and tears her neck open with his plastic teeth. And gets blood all over the Actually, place. I think he does it without the plastic teeth. Yeah, because that's right. He yeah, pops he them, puts in them back in. Back in yeah. And you can see you can the see multiple teeth, teeth marks yeah. on her neck. So, so he just gnaws on her for a bit. The Jennifer Beals character shows back up here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is where it starts like, you know, like, what what is actually objectively happening here? Right. Because she's talking to him and like their relationship is one where, you know, she's just fucking with him, you know? Right. Uh, the way that I guess he fucks with uh, all the... Um, so she, then she's like, you know, I don't want to have any anything to do with you and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, she's disgusted and by my, him at this yeah, point. And I've got my, this other guy. And so they go out into the club and Nicolas Cage is like, no, look at her teeth. She's a vampire. And then, you know, the way that she approaches it is like, you know, I remember, you, you know, he's like, you remember me? He's like, yeah. And she kind of plays it off like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that. That she did know him at one point. Like, yeah, she's like, you're Peter, right? How, yeah. how have you been? So did yeah. she actually, what were you getting out of that scene? Was She this... she really did go home with him earlier yeah. on in the movie. Yeah. She was one of his one night stands. Right. So and she hasn't thought. seen him since then. <laughs> yeah. He's fantasized about her and made her into this vampire. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. That's probably right. Rabies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So he flees the club. He's thrown out. He's telling people, like, <laughs> you have to kill me. You have to use the cross like this and all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah, the one guy does. He's like, oh, please don't. Uh, <laughs> um, it's chased away. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the, the crucifix, I think that one scene where he drops his groceries because he sees the giant cross. <laughs> the yes, and the guy's like, this, this, uh, this is not New York. A nice guy bends down to help him pick up his groceries. He's like, wait, sir, you forgot your groceries. I was like, that's that's mm -hmm. out of the Midwest. That's not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're expecting him to take that already. Yeah. No, they would just ignore you and keep walking. Uh, that's all, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see all different stripes of people mm -hmm. live in, in New York City. And uh, so then he uh, tries to, uh, uh, he has a little bit of death wish. He's very disheveled. He doesn't seem to know what's going on. And so he goes. But he does know he's a vampire. He knows he's a vampire. I'm a vampire. Well, mm -hmm. but at this point mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, I turned into a vampire the other night. Because he has this, <laughs> this is the climactic, like, imaginary uh, conversation that he has with his therapist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? At a street corner. Yeah. Looking like him a crazy person. Corner. This is after this is him. He, He's <laughs> mouth covered in blood. After he beat up a pallet to get his board. Yeah, to, uh, yeah. to get his He's stake. begging people to stake him with and then, it. Yes, and then has a just conversation with along. the corner of a building. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and then he runs into the corner of a building and then has a conversation with his therapist. Has a therapy there. session with it. Yes, he does. Yeah. But this is kind of productive because the therapist forgives him for all of his transgressions. Yeah, it's like I raped somebody last week. Oh, you know, that happens. I killed someone last night. No, you think anybody's going to notice? Uh, I'll cover I'll for you. Yeah. I'll take care yeah, of the she'll cops. take care of it. Yeah. People and, die all the time in New York. And, he, and all he wants is love. And, and guess what? My next, uh, <laughs> my next session is this girl. She's really nice. And you two will get along. But so he like... He cures himself. He cures himself, right? But then as he's wandering away, he gets into an argument with the girl who's not there. <laughs> <laughs> and like within 10 minutes, the whole relationship starts falling <laughs> apart. Which is hilarious. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, <laughs> then, yeah, they're that, then he just yells at her going up the stairs. So many outbursts in this movie. So funny. Ugh. And how does this all resolve itself then once he gets back to his apartment? Oh, I like the way they scuttles under the... the <laughs> like a bug, yeah. 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 Like, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he, he's also, like, the more he, like, progresses in his vampirism, he gets very hunchy and, like, mm -hmm. very, yeah, like, Nosferatu, really, just creature-like movements. But, yeah, the scuttle under the couch coffin was really... <laughs> 
the best. Very funny. He crawls and once he puts the vampire teeth on in the park bench, he like crawls away. Mm-hmm. Ah, that yes, was that great. That was really funny. <laughs> I'm gonna make some choices here. Follow me with that camera. <laughs> well, Oliver's brother has gotten wind of the idea that she's been assaulted by her boss, and yeah. so yes. it, to defend her honor, he's gonna take care of this guy for her. So they park outside the apartment. He's like, you know, let me know when you see this guy. And so she identifies <laughs> like, him. Hey, that's him right that's there. That's him, the crazy looking one coming down the street. <laughs> Covered in blood. You know, yeah. It's too bad that this didn't happen in a neighborhood Charles Bronson lived in because he could just shoot with a bazooka <laughs> or something. It feels like this could be like a Death Wish movie at this point, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it does. It kind of has yeah. that kind of grimy. Yeah. Well, that, we were saying before, like the tone of the movie is like, it's really weird. It's like serious and grimy. And it feels like it's after like a serious subject, mm-hmm. but at the same time, there's Nicolas Cage, you know, <laughs> and his uh, eccentricities. Yes, um, when he's so eccentric. That's one character. Somebody actually movie. says yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> um, when the brother confronts him because uh, you know uh, Peter has gone under the into the couch coffin. <laughs> Uh, the first thing, because he's got like a death wish, right? He is asking, yeah. begging, begging people to kill him, and so he positions the board over his heart, trying to kill himself again. Yeah, and the brother just shoves it into him, and then yeah. it's like horrifying. Yeah, I mean, so it was kind of like because it's a. Then you're like, oh, this is all like this make believe stuff, but that now guy he's just, dead. He's dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, you know, he just got a board shoved through his heart. Mm-hmm. For he did real. rape a woman though, so and kill one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, he raped yeah. one. Kill I know, one. but I guess it's shocking just in the moment. Right. You know, like you're like, yes. oh Jesus! Oh, he, it's right. like Whether all this he deserved yeah. it or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh, now he is. After all this, he is dead. Mm-hmm. He is dead. Mm-hmm. He's stake through the heart. But he does seem to have a vision of uh, the vampirus on his way out and in, uh, into the New York mm-hmm. sunlight or whatever. Dream of me, angel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's still going to be with him and take care of him on the other <laughs> side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh boy. I still, I still have questions. I <laughs> what, what any, what lingering questions? That's right. Sean got all the answers. I do. Why did he flip out? Like what made him snap? Oh, I can't answer that. I know. <laughs> I, w- I wish the movie had showed us like what made him snap. I mean, I get, I kind of take it as like American Psycho is like the companion movie to this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we don't see an event that sets off Patrick Bateman in that movie. It just is the way he is. Yes, yeah, this little progression yeah. of you know, cooking brains, mm-hmm. except in this movie. Mm-hmm. We're just saying he was never really all that well. No, I'm right. Right. It just came to the surface. Personality. Yeah. yeah. All right. And I think the bat is the trigger, just, you know, like mm-hmm. that he just seizes on, that his, you know, his mental mm-hmm. state seizes on. Mm-hmm. But yeah. He's not a, not a not a well man. He does ex- mm-hmm. he does mm-hmm. have explain a lot of being aroused while fighting this bat. He's very horny. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> How many times does he say to his therapist? Was, yes, because I was, I was very horny. I was very horny. Yes, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it so it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I recommend. <laughs> Hearing Nick Cage say to a therapist with like all the sincerity Just in the world. Sincere. like sincere. Uh, yeah, because I was horny. Yes, yeah. I was very horny. Yes. I was very horny. It is. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I know we're probably going to have to keep you in suspense. Would we recommend that you watch this movie? Well, did you have any other questions, Holly, yeah, that yeah. Sean yeah, yeah, can yeah. answer I don't before think, we... No, well, I don't think there's here, any. Here, Holly, you didn't ask this question, but I'm going to give you an answer anyways. Um, so during the sex scenes with Jennifer Beals, uh, Nick Cage requested that they pour hot yogurt on his feet so that he could be aroused for the sex scenes. What? Mm, I, Hot I'm gonna yogurt. chalk this up to Urban Legend. Uh, with the, take Unless it up with somebody... the with the IMDb trivia and the Ringer article because they both oh, have that the in there. Okay. Yes, I'll believe if somebody's if we've written scholarly articles about yep. this, that's fine. Yep. I, can, I can deal with. It. I Hot, don't trust IMDb I'm sorry, for that information. But the, the hot yogurt on feet is the grossest sentence I maybe in the English language. <sighs> So we're How, saying, what you're saying is, in order for the actor, Nicolas Cage, to Let me achieve- read you the quote so that I'm not paraphrasing here. It says, because, um, okay, so Nick Cage didn't want it to be Jennifer Beals. He was really pushing for them to cast Pat- Patricia Arquette, who was his girlfriend mm-hmm. at the time. She was 19, and actually Nick Cage is 24 when he's making this movie. He's young. Jesus. Um, 
So he is pissed off because they won't cast Patricia Arquette. So he's really cold and really shitty to Jennifer Beals, which is part, which is one of the like red string of tension in this movie, sure, right? Because like sure. I said, everyone's got issues with everybody's on the set of this movie. So he's being a dick to Jennifer Beals because he says that should be my girlfriend instead. And let's not forget, Nick Cage is a kid in nepotism. So of course he believes people he knows should be casted and things. But very true. From the Ringer article, it said Cage eventually warmed up to Beals, but his methods remain bizarre. To get turned on, Nick asked to have Nick asked to have hot yogurt poured over his toes while he was doing a love scene with Jennifer. Shulman recalls nobody could comprehend why yogurt got Cage aroused, but the crew obliged. If you look at the shot, you'll notice you don't ever see his feet. Okay. Oh, uh, I know where it's happening. Yep. It's the, the moments yep. where she's biting. Yes. Him, and yep. then yeah, that's the, okay. Yep. Uh, and he's there's some poor crew member pouring hot, hot yogurt, yogurt on his feet. Pouring on his feet. And he's like, oh. Yep. <laughs> Does he understand? He, he doesn't have to actually be aroused. <laughs> he believes in method acting. You know, Holly, Holly? I don't think he I does. Yeah. yeah. There's this thing called pretend, but certain actors, you know. Don't well, do it. Yeah. He's in a wiser <laughs> man now. <laughs> some <laughs> actor. Yeah. <laughs> This movie was basically like a laboratory for Nicholas Cage. Oh, yeah. Cage, right? He was like, definitely just pushing the boundaries to see what he could get away with. Yeah. And because he was Nicholas Cage, they let him get away with everything. Yeah. Because I don't remember this being like heavily promoted. I mean, I nope. knew who he was, but he wasn't like a big box office draw. I think that right. really happened around The Rock or, you know, mm -hmm. after. Because it was like he was around and then did leaving Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And that got him like the movies that, you know, right. I think he became really like superstar famous for mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, would we recommend this movie? Well, we're going to tell you, but first of all, Sean's already told you, but <laughs> I'll tell you again in a minute. We're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to need the help of our mailman. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you for the 500th episodes. delivery. There yeah. were episodes that he wasn't on. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you keeping score with Igor now? I mean, I'm just remembering really early on. We oh, yeah. didn't have. We didn't have an Igor. We didn't have Igor. Yeah. Igor didn't. Igor. He evolved, was, yes, into. And then there were episodes that he wasn't on because of operator error. Or was he on vacation? Like oh yeah, 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 he was on vacation. There was another he guy. He gets PTO. Of course. I mean, yeah, he's a full, full fledged yeah, member of the. Okay, uh, we take care of him. <laughs> didn't we have another? Didn't we have a lurch or something at some point? Yeah, I can't he, remember what for. He moved on. Did we fire him? Reviews? Was it? We did. We had like a. There was a lurch. There was a type lurch. character. It was like who Igor's Igor's door. cousin who moved in for yeah, a few. Yeah. yeah, it's like the Brady cousin. Oh, he's like, he was yeah. there for a couple cousin episodes. Oliver. And <laughs> then he was Oliver, gone. Yeah. yeah, cousin Oliver, yeah. Yeah. Now he's gone. Well, um, <laughs> I guess so we're we got uh, some uh mail from uh you dear people out there about our five hundredth episode. Yes. But uh, I guess before I read them, um let's go why don't we tell people how they can find us for future comments on by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. So longtime listener Dom Cree. Oh, first of all, before we get to Dom, mm. uh, Jason <laughs> Madsack, the keeper of the MVP Saturday Night right. Freak Show oh, Wall yes. of Fame, uh, sent us this uh, piece of art. It's incredible. It's fantastic. Which yep. it, 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 Magnum like, Opus. Yeah. It, it contains references to like 179 uh, movies that we've covered, and we've been pouring over this thing, trying to identify each and every mm -hmm. one of them, but it is a, a The best Where's Waldo, I think. Mean. Yeah, it's it really fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And we're all in it. Yeah, know, all in it. Like, <laughs> yeah. It took yeah. me a long time to find myself, though. Yeah, I found you right away. Yeah, I, I didn't. I was like, <laughs> I was more like, oh, there's Frankenhooker. There, you know, I was like, I'll distract it by the other. You were stuff. the first one I found. <laughs> yeah, you are kind of by yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest of us are mixed in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll put it on our social media. And, and Holly's skirt is a uh, Wookie. Yeah. 
<laughs> but thank you very much. It was thank you uh, very, very touching, jaw, very jaw kind. dropping. It's yeah. amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dom writes in and he says, 500, oh my God, what an innings. I think one of the highlights is undoubtedly the utter disdain for Sean's pick. <laughs> but how can you top when that director posted a rebuttal as a YouTube comment? I know. Oh, Larry Block. Larry Block, yeah, yeah, the writer yeah. of Funhouse. Which our, our mortal enemy. I forever. noticed the 4K for that was coming out, and he's not on it. That's <laughs> too bad. Oh, oh, dang. <laughs> no new interviews, no commentary, Old nothing. Grudges. Sean, what if we got to do a commentary on it instead? I would Let's die. Do it. Let's <laughs> do it. I would die. Anyone have a hookup with for with Fuck you, that, Larry Black. Please, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Dom goes on to say, every iteration of the Saturday Night Freak Show crew has had brilliant chemistry, and I'm not lying that I think everyone kind of wishes that they could be right there, tearing Hell Comes to Frog Town apart behind the mic with <laughs> you guys in person, beer in hand. Saturday Night Freak Show, world order for life. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Dom. Thanks, Dom. Thank you, Dom. We love you. Uh, Richard Kratzer writes in and says, my favorite episode was the one featuring the island of Dr. Moreau. When discussing the way Brando and Kilmer were behaving behind the scenes, yeah. Colin said something to the effect of, do these guys just not care about their legacy? <laughs> and it cracks me up every time. Also, you guys brought up the documentary Lost Soul, yeah. the doomed journey of Richard Stanley's island of Dr. Moreau, which I didn't even know existed. And so thanks to the freak show, I've since added it to my collection. Here's nice. to 500 more shows. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. It's a great documentary. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I discovered you guys with the Dog Soldiers episode, a movie movie. I was increasingly convinced no one else had ever heard of. Me and my brother had to go through a lot just to get a goddamn DVD of it. I love (laughs) all the Igor stuff, even the episodes where he says nothing or repeats the show's (laughs) intro. Seriously, though, we need some uh, Igor merch. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, we can do some Igor. We don't know what Igor yeah. looks like, so we can't do merch. <laughs> well, now we have an illustration. We can, no, we, we we can, yeah, or we can make just like a, I don't know Igor's mailbag design. You know, yeah, yeah. Says, Kayla's on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Travis Legler writes in and says, "I still love listening to the Giver episode. Listening to Sean and Travis talk about when the guy was in his office and thought of the idea of robots into cars and yelled out loud, Holy fuck!' <laughs> then later, when Travis said the movie title Time Runner that Colin couldn't remember." but had been trying all of the episodes uh, still makes me laugh. The freak show field trips are also a blast. Mm -hmm. We haven't done one in a while. Yeah. What was the last one? Halloween? Kills. No, we kills, didn't do kills. Yeah, kills. No, we, yeah we did. Yeah, we, did. we watched it here in the basement. Yeah, it wasn't much yeah. of a field trip because we were here. <laughs> yeah, but we all watched it together and then recorded it immediately after. Yeah. Like we do with every movie. Yeah. Yeah. Adam Kaler says, 500 episodes. I assume you have conquered the world, yes. the universe, and the multiverse. Yes. Because of the freak show, I've been exposed to such questionable entertainment as Cool as Ice, Flesh for Frankenstein, Night Killer, mm-hmm. and Ugg, the baby. <laughs> he says, the I'm, baby. I'm convinced Michaela is keeping the canon group alive a la Weekend at mm-hmm. Bernie's so that someone will sell her the leftovers. So she yeah. Can make one large canon crossover film. Oh, my God. The canon multiverse. Oh my! Yes. I'll fucking write it. It'd be, oh, <laughs> it'd be so easy to I do. Know, it'd be so easy. Uh, in all seriousness, he says, I appreciate you all as well as the listeners who keep Igor gainfully employed. You start out my week on the right foot, and I couldn't be more thankful. The Freak Show is the first podcast I ever discovered, and it's the best. And thank you all for the fun. Oh, thank you. It's very thank kind. Thank you. you. That's so sweet. Bill Hainer writes in says his favorite part of the show is when Sean pronounces the baby. <laughs> Do Sean <it> people. <laughs> the baby. <laughs> uh, Darren Rook says, my favorite episodes of the Cobra and over the top episodes. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like Sean's running or Sean's summary to Cobra and how much he loved the film after all the talk Colin had done about his fascination <laughs> with the giant burger. Yeah. Has anyone brought Sean this burger yet? No. And did you find out the giant cut out of the movie poster for Colin to keep? Over the top has to be <laughs> Oh, oh, for the arm wrestling yeah, the, oh, at the yeah, end yeah, of yeah. the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure that prop hamburger sitting in a warehouse somewhere, right? Like, oh, guaranteed. Like, if not in we should Stallone's be able to track personal it down, collection. Right? Yeah. I would think. There's a guy in town here who's got a burger. Big as your head. Yep. So, <laughs> oh, God, that guy. On the, yes. on the freak show want yes. list. Um, Joey Blythe writes and says, I've worked my way back to the first Blood Rage, a.k.a. Slasher, a.k.a. Nightmare at Mm. Shadow Woods episode (laughs) starring Louise Lasser. And I'm now watching on Tubi the house that cried murder, a.k.a. The Bride, a.k.a. Last House on Massacre Street, 
starring Robin Sasser. That's what they wow. were watching at the drive-in in that movie, right? I think so. In Blood yeah. Rage? Because yeah. remember, we saw them, yeah. we were like, wait, is that a real movie? Because <laughs> right. if it is, yeah. we need to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> the house that cried murder. So like... there you go, Joey found it. Hell yeah. Nice. Uh, Jimbo Ice says, I think I found you guys while I was looking for a review of It. It's been about four years now, and I think I've just about caught up. Cool to witness the evolution of the show to where it is now. Here's to 500 more freaky Saturday nights. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be Colin Skelton down here running the board. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we'll just get it set up on wires. Igor, no, Igor will be puppeting it. <laughs> <laughs> Igor's going to get in your body. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's going to wear your skeleton like a mech suit. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be like uh, Actually, I'm, I'm okay nest. with this. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, what do you that might be cool. Uh, and finally, Simon Carter says, congratulations, guys. And thanks for being an awesome way to whittle away some time. And then he has a little beer emoji and says, cheers. Oh, Aww, thanks. Cheers. cheers to you, too. So thank you all. Thank you. Uh, thank for you. The, the well wishes. Very much. Uh, and we appreciate you listening uh, this long. You know, I mean, yeah, so thank ten you. Years thank you. everyone stuff. who's oh been God. with us for I, whether you've been with us for a month or for, you know, 10 years. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Appreciate it. It's been a journey. Mm-hmm. It has. All right, about tonight's episode, Vampire's Kiss. Mm -hmm. Michael Whitaker writes in and says, isn't this the movie where Nicolas Cage overacts, chews scenery, and makes bizarre facial expressions? Yes, but it's like the most like that. (laughs) (laughs) There's just just different levels of that. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. this is like grade A version of that. (laughs) Prime beef, yeah. Top Sterling. Mm-hmm. Well, Joey Blythe says, I love the whole Alva, there you are scene. <laughs> and when she says, I have a gun, and the woman just says, What the fuck is going on? And then just leaves like an NPC in Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, 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 yeah she does. <laughs> if they turn the camera around, she's just still walking. Yeah. Into a wall. Yes. <laughs> I uh, underrated scene when it went before he fully descends into like assaulting her and picking on her when he calls her into the office and puts the cigarette in his mouth and goes am i getting through to you alpha and then, like points at her that's like a good mid-range mm. cage like freak out yeah, like it's yeah. a good it's not it's yeah the good like we're ramping up to something more freak yeah. out yeah it even feels like he did a nod to that and in, in everywhere are they uh unbearable way to mess Mess it down. Down. Yeah. <laughs> um Travis Legler says it's about fucking time. Fuck off, Chuck Norris. We got Nick Cage on the Saturday Night Freak Show. I'm going to use this movie to teach my kid the ABC. <laughs> this is a good choice, guys. And this movie is crazy fun. Yeah, I can't believe I, I thought for sure when I was going to say I was going to pick this column, I was going to be like, actually, we did that already. Like, I'm shocked it took 500 episodes to get it's this. It's been movie. on my list for, yeah? Yeah, ever since I watched it there. I was like, it's coming soon. Uh, Scraw793 says, I watched that uh, fairly recently. Apparently, Nick Cage was batshit crazy on the set, insisting they use a real bat in one scene. And I think he also reuses the vampire's kiss voice in Color Out of Space, which maybe a yeah, little bit. Yeah. Based on I his think dad, he does. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he says. Oh, that. oh. Now it all makes oh, sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. I believe so. That's who he's yeah. basically. Now it, off it makes of. sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the bat was a big point of contention because Nick Cage was like, "We're not. I don't want to use the mechanical one. It looks like shit." Which Sean, it, as you point out, it, it does. does. But yes. I love it. But uh, and Nick yeah. Cage was even like, "I found someone in Mexico that can mail us one." And blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> and the director's like, "You will get actually get rabies. Yeah. Like, we, and you can't control a bat. You let it loose in the room and it's going to do whatever it wants. We can't get to fly in a direction." <laughs> and like, I, this was a back and forth for weeks over this bat. This thing just looks like a potato with wings. Yeah. Like it's yeah, not a it's great bat. Wonderful. But it's I wonderful. love it dearly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it looks like those things from the Quiznos commercial. Yes, oh, it, it does. does. Oh my God. Yeah, put yeah, some wings on a little hat. Yeah. <laughs> Eat Quiznos socks. Yeah. Those love the moon. <laughs> yeah, that thing. Yeah. Yeah. For they are good to yeah. us. Look that <laughs> shit up. No one younger than us knows what they're talking about. Look it up, folks. Yeah. We used to live in the wild west. Early 2000s of advertising. Quiznos commercial. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wild remember time. when that was a YouTube thing. Yeah. Like before. Uh, we, was there even that YouTube? That was probably E Bomb's yeah. world. Yeah. Something. Probably. Oh, yeah. And they adapted Ask your grandparents what E Bomb's <laughs> yeah. world is, kids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Robin Linneman Silverberg says, finally. And uh, Shaky Subject Matter says, good luck. And DJ <laughs> Dogman Fish says, if you haven't run down the street screaming, I'm a vampire, I'm a vampire, are you living your best life? No. no. I want to You're try not. it. But it has to be like a crowded place like New York. Yeah. You can't yeah, just do uh, yeah, it yeah, 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 with like yeah. five people on with the street. With a bunch of unsuspecting right. yeah, uh, right. folks out there. Um, so preferably a place with pigeons so they can yeah. Yeah. up when you're Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Death Spa, and uh, Stratos Salamanis is Chelsea Field, who's or Chelsea Field, who's in that movie, mm-hmm. was also in Commando. Oh, and wants to know if the movie is difficult to find. Death Spa. It was on Amazon Prime when we watched it. We had to it, scroll right? yeah. a few clicks down to find it, I believe, but we found it. And and I'm it was sure in, if you just type it in, it was in yeah. HD. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you don't have Amazon, I mean, it, it, I seem like it's out there. It's available, yeah. And there's oh, a yeah. Blu-ray from like MPI mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. I looked it up. Aaron Dawn, Murphy, Murphy's mom, <laughs> says, oh, because we were talking about, so Merritt Buttrick is an actor in that, who yes. I think we put on what the Saturday name. Night Freak Show with that episode. Mm-hmm. And uh, she says he was such a cool actor, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. And Robin yeah. Linneman Silverberg says, I first saw him on the short lived, lived series Square Pegs. Oh, yeah. I forgot oh, about yeah. Square Pegs. Wasn't yeah. um, Jamie Gertz in that? I think so. When I looked him up. And Sarah I was Jessica like, what? Parker, what? right? Yeah. yeah. Am I the, I'm the only person that was Square Pegs. <laughs> no, I, I think I've so. I've heard of it, but I've yeah, never so. seen Square yeah. Pegs. Yeah. Yeah, that came up first, even before Star Trek Two, And I thought for sure he'd be Star Trek Two and Star Trek Three. Yeah. Okay. Now, we're going to go around the table. We're going to tell you. Well, we thought individually of tonight's movie, Vampire's Kiss, starting with... Molly, hmm. you can go first. Thank you. What did you think <laughs> of Nicolas Cage's Vampire's Kiss? Um, I really had no idea what we were getting into. Mm. I purposely looked up nothing about this movie, mm-hmm. so I had no inkling whatsoever. Um, I will say I wasn't quite sure for the first, I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour. I was like, I don't know about this. I don't You're know where we're going flashbacks with flashbacks to habit, weren't you? I was. I was I was having flashbacks. I'm like, this is random as shit, and I don't know where it's going, but by the end of it, by God was I on board. <sighs> Jesus Christ, this is the pinnacle of Nicolas Cage. This is it. I mean, we can talk about good performances in Pig and mm-hmm. uh, Massive t- uh, Unbearable Way Massive Talent is an amazing movie. We'll talk about it end of year. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is pure cage. I I it's everything I wanted. It was amazing. This is like original recipe. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Mm, it really is. Those 12 spices <laughs> taste good. <laughs> yeah, I I as long as stick with it because it is there is a chunk of it that's hard to hard to stick with. It's a little slow. But yeah, no, once you get there, it's pure cage. It's wonderful. I definitely recommend for sure. Colin, what do you think? Yeah, um well, I agree. I think there is, you know, I think because of like a tonal, is it an inconsistency? It feels like it's on purpose, but it feels inconsistent when you're watching it, right? It's like, yeah. this is uh, Nicolas Cage in a different movie and just kind of the, the fascination is watching people kind of react to him in this movie. And yeah, I think there's a lot of, it just felt like maybe there were scenes that kept ping ponging back and forth and like, okay, I got mm-hmm. this already and we're just, you know. I know that they they were they were sequential and they were forwarding the plot, but it did kind of feel like we're covering uh, some of the same ground. Mm-hmm. So it was a little slow in that regards. But I think, um, you know, Nicolas Cage's performance in this is why you're going to watch it. Yep. And now is it like in an ironic kind of way, knowing who Nicolas Cage is, that we're kind of appreciating it as like, you know, well, we know he's going to be goofy. I think the movie is a comedy, though. It's like it, yeah. it, it knows it's a comedy. I don't appreciate this ironically. I appreciate this fully. Okay. Well, that's what <laughs> I'm Genuine, saying. Even, genuinely. Yeah. Genuinely. Right. Even but, knowing where he is now. So it's not people going for. into it going like, okay, now we get to, you know. I'm sure some people will, but. Yeah. Watch like Crazy Cage. I'm like, well, that is kind of the, but I think that that's what I'm saying. The filmmakers know that. Yeah. You know? That's the point. They knew it yeah. before we did mm. kind of thing, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, it is definitely, and I do, I think he's a, a, a brave actor. Um, I don't know how risky this was for him and his career. I his mean, his agent assume- did not want him to do it because coming off of Moonstruck and Raising Arizona, he and was- Peggy Sue got married. It's like you're supposed to do something else. It is a step backwards. Don't yeah. go yeah. this way. Yeah. I remember. Um, I think it was Roger Ebert, uh, the great Roger Ebert. I used to, I miss reading that guy's fucking reviews, but he said I think it was about this movie. But I remember him saying about Nicolas Cage that he's an actor who goes out on a limb. And then saws it off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay. You, you know, sometimes, that kind of nails. Sometimes the tree falls down and sometimes he falls down. 
He's like the when Bugs Bunny like cuts a hole in the ground, but he's sitting on the top of the whole part that falls through. That's yeah. Nick Cage all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's I mean, I guess as an actor, that's what makes him interesting to watch. He's a guy who's trying different styles of acting. You know, depending on what the you know the the, the requirements of the role are. Obviously, he can mm-hmm. play you know like straight drama or whatever. I think he's even trying you know different dramatic things there, uh, like in Pig or you know for mm-hmm. instance. Um, but yeah, this was, um, this is like, this is that kind of Nicolas Cage movie that you're like, you know, like crazy cage. I think yep. this is, uh, it's gotta be, uh, yeah, it probably is like Holly said, this is the source. This is the, the top. I think it beats, you know, the wicker man or mm-hmm. wild at heart or anything like mm-hmm. that. Oh yeah. This is pure. This hasn't, yeah. this hasn't been cut with anything yet. No. Nobody, yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody stepped on it. Nobody's added anything to it. This is, uh, this is fresh. Yeah. And I think it also, it works as a, as a movie that's trying to, you know, like uh, it has some kind of philosophical, uh, you know, uh, questions that it's working with, you know, like we were talking about the isolation within New York and the quest for love and all this other stuff uh, as seen through this fractured, uh, psychology. So, um, I mean, I would definitely recommend it. I, I, uh, I was, inter- I, you're, n- you're never like, you're never bored because you're never sure what the fuck he's going to do next mm-hmm. time he shows up. So, uh, yeah, you got to watch it. Sean, what'd you think of Vampire's Kiss? Yeah. Nicholas Cage's performance is, uh, it's electric in this movie. And that is, I mean, he's the pure force behind this movie. Um, uh, <laughs> he's, <laughs> It's it's fantastic. Like it's it's this movie is like we said, it's pure cage. Mm-hmm. I I don't what we've said here tonight about the movie. I don't think in we, we don't even get the tip of the iceberg to explain mm-hmm. how he comes off in this movie. How, uh, a, a sad, funny, uh, despondent, suicidal, absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. Like he hits everything in this movie and. I mean, that's why the movie succeeds. That's what you said. You kind of can't look away from him. Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic movie. Yeah. I had so much fun. So it's much. it's fucking like like we said. If it wasn't him, this would be some dark ass yeah. shit. And yeah. it's still yeah. some dark ass shit in this Someone, movie. Judd Nelson would be some fucking yeah. Yeah, dark shit. Yeah. Someone yeah. Yeah. someone texted me while we were watching it, and they're like, "How's the movie?" And I said. It's fucking bonkers. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I'm here for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. Uh, Nick Cage is a beautiful human being, <laughs> and I love treasure. I think he, we're, he we're really finally is. aware of that. <laughs> I <laughs> think, but and I think, uh, I think the the thing is though, we should have realized that it's always been there. Mm-hmm. Like we're, I think we're we're coming to it too late. He's been showing this stuff, f- you know, forever, but we're all finally no, recognizing. No, it's like it. no. What's it, happened is it's like when a joke goes on for too long, like it's funny at first, then it stops being funny, then it right. comes back around. Yeah. Nick Cage is just coming back yeah. around. Yeah, well, like, yeah. Old Nick Cage to be well, respectable. If you've if you've seen massive talent the ongoing thing in that movie is like he's back and he's like not that he ever left (laughs) um please never leave us nick cage i love you i love this movie you should definitely watch it for this performance it's it's freaking crazy so yeah i'm gonna recommend it michaela take us home does nick cage have an inside the actor studio episode Oh god! I need like I need that show to come back just for Nick Cage, if nothing else. Right? But I need it to be like five hours long because I need to talk about like almost have you ever every seen that movie. stack of, of of questions he used to always have. Yeah, like, Lipton. Yeah, like, like it was would, a whole stack of blue cards. Yeah, I was like, who would do it now that he's gone? Yeah, I I love Inside the Actors Studio. I do too. That's great. great. That used to be fascinating. Yeah, it's yeah. Great. yeah who could do I'm it? Just the Tom Hanks one was really was good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my god, what a great so, show. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Vampire's Kiss. Um, this was my first time watching it. Um, I had seen clips. I had seen memes. I knew that it had like a crazy cage rage performance, but I don't think I realized at what point in his career it was and why like that makes this movie so important is because like he doesn't do this movie. Maybe he has an entirely different career, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I, I th- it, this would have come out somehow. I don't, I don't know. think Nick Cage would have been able to have an acting career without doing something like Disag- that. Disagree. Disagree. He's a Coppola. He would have had an acting career either way. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he would have. Um, what I'm saying is he would You're right. Yeah. He yeah. would have had the career. Mm-hmm. I don't think he could have stopped himself from letting this out but at some point. But that's, Even if he didn't do this movie. He had to do this movie to go, you know, like where else would he have gotten the opportunity? To right. Make? Right. Because he couldn't do it under the Coen brothers or like, I mean, that's a I think my point is he would have found something yeah. it's a different to do kind of this. Wacky, yeah. yeah. 
Um, Mika- it, Michaela, um, season nine, episode ten, aired February sixteenth, two thousand three. <laughs> and that's Nick Cage inside the actor. Oh Nick my Cage. god! <laughs> and that's like right as he's about to do National Treasure, yep. huh? Yep. Oh, Ooh. Okay. All, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna go watch this. It's out there. Um, I need, but I need another one now because, like, I could listen to him talk about Pig for like five hours day. alone. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm with um, you. but I'm glad that one exists that I can go watch. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, it's. Yeah, I think that this movie is the time when Nick Coppola dies and Nick Cage is born. You know what I'm yes. saying? Like, like I think Nick Coppola. That's who, that's left who got us staked a long in the heart ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nick yeah. Coppola got yes. was killed. Because in this I, movie. I think Nick Cage has been Nick Cage for so long now that he is Nick Cage. Does that make sense? Yes. Like this. Yeah version of nick cage we see in this movie might have started off as just like an experimental performance in this movie but it has become all-consuming and this just is who he is now so nick coppola no longer exists nick cage is all that we are left with and maybe it's a copy of a copy of a copy at this point but this is the original that started that all so Mm -hmm. it's your duty to see it i think then right like (laughs) you have to see it so definitely recommend it it lived up to hype it lived up to expectations it lived up to the memes um, it lived up to 500. It, yeah, it lived up to it uh, no, I'm glad to hear that. It did. Good um, job, Michaela. It, uh, would it surprise you if I told you um, Christian Bale said he uses this as inspiration for Patrick Bateman in American Psycho? Love it. Like, yeah, that's the double feature to watch. Like, yeah. back really? to back. Yeah. Yes. Great double feature. Um, yeah, because you just you think about like that Huey Lewis in the news scene, and that is very mm. much like Christian Bale's version of this, yeah. you know, like all very the 